Welcome to the video, I'm Chris from Aloha, and this is the first video in a series where we're building an AI medical transcription app from scratch. If you're interested in healthcare, AI, or just wanna see some practical applications of technology, this is the series for you. In today's video, we're focusing on the transcription engine, which is the core technology that converts a doctor's dictation into text. To give you a sense of the challenges, let me play one of the sample dictations that we have so you can see what we were dealing with. A lot of people don't realize how hard some of this is to understand, even for a trained transcriptionist. The latter help is smooth, but the sequence of the present period. But present, come on. If you can tell me what that dictation said after just listening once, I would be very impressed. Let me play it again, but I'll show a side by side of what the various AI models we tested came up with. The latter help is smooth, but the sequence of the present period. But present, come on. Okay, so as you can see, some of the models performed a lot better than others, and we'll reveal which ones are which in the video. And we're making this video and sharing what we're learning so other companies and organizations can hopefully take what we've learned and implement it in their own environments. A little bit of context, we're brought on by a medical practice to build a custom tool that would enhance the workflow of their existing transcriptionists. The medical practice wanted this tool to do a first pass at the transcription, which would then be handed to the transcriptionist so they can make further edits and corrections. Hopefully this tool would not only save time, but also reduce the cognitive of load and fatigue of the team. Before we dive into the specifics of the transcription, I wanna show a quick demo of the tool so you can get a full picture. This is a simplified demo of the tool, but the way it works is you can drag the transcription file into the tool, it's gonna to run through a series of steps, and the final output is the first pass at a transcription. We'll cover some other steps like medication grading and other videos, but for now, we're gonna cover how we did the transcription part of the tool. To be honest, implementing the transcription was really easy, as we'll see later in the video. The bulk of the work was doing research and trying to figure out which model to use. We needed something that was very accurate Accurate, especially with medical terminology, cost-effective at scale, and privacy focus, and specifically we needed HIPAA compliance. If you're not familiar with HIPAA, it's a privacy regulation that requires strict protection of patient information. In plain English, it means we need really strong encryption and a lot of mechanisms to make sure that we're handling data properly. And so a non-negotiable for the project was whatever model we chose had to be HIPAA compliant. We ended up doing a series of benchmarks to test the models, and we're gonna highlight one in particular in the video, which really showcases the differences. It was a single test file that had a bunch of medication thrown in to test how the models would work against specific medical terminology. So let's go through the models we chose and how they performed. So the first one was 11 Lab Scribe. 11 Labs is not usually known for speech to text. They're actually more known for text to speech capabilities, but we wanted to give them a shot because at the time of building, they recently came out with this model, which was HIPAA compliant and they claimed had really good accuracy with medical terms. And here's how it would perform with some medication names. I'm honestly probably not gonna pronounce these correctly. It got a lot of the correct terms like Umgality and Wilbutrin, but it did make some mistakes like confusing Rizotriptan with Risperidone, which is extremely problematic because these are entirely different medications with different effects. The next model we decided to benchmark was GPT-40 Transcribe. This is OpenAI's latest and most advanced speech-to-text model, actually outperforming their previous model, Whisper, which a lot of medical applications use. GPT-40 Transcribe did get a couple terms like Emgality and Provigil correct, but as you can see, a ton of mistakes. It only got about 25% correct, which definitely not good enough. But to be honest, we were not that surprised by the results because compared to the other models, this one was actually actually not meant for medical. This was more of a general transcription model that OpenAI released. The third option we looked at was AWS Medical Transcribe. We chose to look at this option because we were already using a bunch of AWS infrastructure for the back end, And when you're already using AWS, it's just very convenient to use another AWS service that plays really well with the ecosystem. A lot of medical apps do use AWS. So I do believe this is a pretty popular model in the medical space. In terms of accuracy, it did perform a little bit better than the OpenAI model, but to be honest, not by much. And for a model that's supposed to be focused on medicine, this was a little bit disappointing to see. And the last model we took a look at was DeepGram. DeepGram was the most interesting to us because at the time of recording, they were the latest model to come out and we had heard very, very good things from people. And looking at performance, it did actually live up to the expectations. In this test specifically, it only got one medication wrong, which is very good. And among all our tests, it scored about a 75% accuracy, which again, compared to the other models, is actually pretty high. The only mistake that it really made was misspelling Nuvagil for Novagil, which honestly isn't too, too bad. But with that being said, we were very happy with the results that we got from DeepGram. So overall, this is how all the models performed. I did want to call out one more time that the most concerning thing we saw was 11 labs confusing Rizotriptan with with risperidone, which Rizotriptan is a medication for migraines, and risperidone is an antipsychotic used to treat schizophrenia and bipolar. That could have some pretty serious consequences if it made it into the final transcription. We wanted to test and show how the models did with particularly challenging dictations. They're actually very common, depending on what dictation device the doctor is using. So I'm gonna play a sample clip from a dictation, and we'll compare how each of the models did. The latter help is smooth, but the sequence of the present period. But present, come on, it's been on Lexapro, and it appears to be more stable here. As mentioned, it's symptomatic HIV. Uh, and has been 
quite stable, um, except for hematological, hematological complications, complications period. So as we can see here, some of the models performed a little bit better than others. Most of the models got the base of the transcription, except for OpenAI, which for some reason just didn't transcribe 90% of it. But the one that got the closest was DeepGram. Something I want you to try is to listen to the transcription and try to figure out if you can see what the doctor is saying without looking at the transcriptions. Then do it again while looking at the transcriptions, and I think you'll notice that you're gonna have an easier time following along with the first pass in front of you. So just imagine how much better a transcription is can work if they had a tool like this to do a first pass. So while accuracy is pretty crucial, let's take a look at the cost of the models. What surprised us most looking at the pricing was that the most accurate model actually ended up being the cheapest among all of them. The differences might just seem like a couple of cents per minute, but when you do this at a bigger scale, it actually does add up. For example, transcribing 100 hours of dictation with DeepGram would cost about $26, but doing 100 hours with AWS Medical Transcribe would cost $600. A pretty big difference, and if you're a hospital group and you have multiple doctors, this could be thousands of dollars per month in difference. So in terms of what we ended up choosing, I think it's pretty obvious. We ended up going with DeepGram because it was the most accurate model and the most cost effective. So this was a no brainer for us. Like I said in the beginning, in terms of implementation, this was actually really simple. DeepGram has a very well-documented API that was easy to use. It literally is just a couple of lines of code to implement this, but at a high level, the way it works is the user uploads a dictation file to our front end. It sends it to our HIPAA compliant and secure back end. The back end then sends it to DeepGram for transcription, which is also HIPAA compliant and then DeepGram sends the transcription back to our backend, and then we're able to do whatever further processing we need to get to the final format. Very few lines of code and really just took a couple minutes to implement. So that was the journey of us picking our transcription model to use and implementing it into the app. This is just one step in a whole line of steps that we went through to build this app. And we'll cover future steps like building a HIPAA compliant backend, building AI agents, in future videos. And again, we're sharing these resources so other companies can learn and hopefully bring it to their own environments. If you guys are interested in learning more, definitely subscribe and check out the other videos on our channel. I'll leave a link to our resources down below. There's a ton of free resources and also a really good newsletter which keeps you up to date on what is the latest in AI. If you guys wanna chat with me or someone else on my team to talk about how to build some of this stuff for your own businesses, I'll leave a link to that below too. If you're building in the AI space, I hope this video was helpful for you. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.